I, I have three children who were born here, and I have six grandchildren. Um, so as you can see, I'm growing old. But uh, the good thing that is that when we start with God, God continues to renew your strength. We actually started in Deliverance Church. I met my wife at, in Deliverance Church. We got married, and uh, we'd been married for, in January, we celebrated 44 years of marriage. Um, so you can see what God can do. God can sustain. God can keep. Uh, this gospel is real. Um, it's true. We have in, as, I, as I went to school and I have stayed a long time in school, I continued to investigate and to check the gospel. And every time I checked it, using my secular uh, education, I found that it is true. The gospel is true. And today I want to share you some uh, revelation knowledge. Uh, speaking from the book of John, chapter 15, verse 1 to 8. Uh, the Bible says, I am the true vine, and my father is a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may be, bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. That's really a true connection. By the way, the theme of this message is, you become what you are connected to. That's what you become. And Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. When you are in something and that something is in you, that is a true connection. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Sounds obvious, but there is a reason why a branch is attached but not fully pulling resources from the stem. The mother plant Continuous in verse 5, I'm the vine, you are the branches. You can see the branch feeds from the vine, the stem that it is connected to. That's why you become what you are connected to. The vine, the, the branch becomes what the vine is, what the stem is. Because it gets its nutrients, it gets what it is from the stem. And what are the results? Verse 5b, who, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And I want to say something about this, you can do nothing. I, 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 as I was thinking about this, when the Bible says you can do nothing, and I wondered, why would the Bible say you can do nothing, and yet we know that we can do something? So I was wondering, what is the truth concerning where the Bible says you can do nothing? I also got to reflect on the words in the, in the Psalms where it says, when, if the watchman, unless the Lord build the house, the builder work in vain. Why would the Bible say that and we are building houses? And then the Bible also says, the, the, unless the Lord watches over the house, the watchmen wake up, but in vain. But I realize what God is saying is the, the, it's a manner of speaking. It's like when you say, that is like nothing compared to what God can do. When the watchmen are waking up, it is like nothing compared to the kind of protection that God can afford you. When you build your house, you think it's beautiful. Just wait if you relied on the Lord, if you trusted on God, if you involved the God factor in your building, it will be a different house. What you have built is like nothing. It's like nothing. It is not nothing, but it is like nothing. Yeah, it's a manner of speaking. And when Jesus says, for without me you can do nothing, He's saying that you think now you have prepared your life, you think you are achieving something, you think you have been successful in a certain measure. It is like nothing compared to what you would be, to what you can become if you involve the God factor in your life, if you involve God. So when you read these verses, we say that, remember, it's a manner of speaking. It is like nothing compared to what you can do with God. Because... God is always telling us, he has given us a certain measure of what we can do. But he's calling us and telling us there are resources and possibilities that he can offer to us. Verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. And then in verse 7, 
If, and the word if here, many people say it's a condition, but I want to say it's a choice. It's much more of a choice. When someone says if, it is telling you if you want to do it and if you don't want to do it. Many people interpret this word if as a condition. But here I want to see it as a choice. Uh, because when you say condition, you are trying to put the burden on God. But when you say it's choice, you are putting the burden on you. Do you see the difference? I, I just had a doctor in law the other day. So, so maybe if you find some legalese in my speaking, then you, you might find the, uh, you might know the background to which I'm coming from. Sometimes I might speak without knowing that I'm not in a court of law and uh, I'm in, in, a, in a church. By the way, uh, apart from preaching, I do other things. As they say in America, you can chew gum and walk. You can be able to do more than one thing at a time at the same time. So, so before I, I, um, I took over the church, I, I had a management consultancy in the city of Memphis, which continues to this day. I do wealth uh, um, consulting in ma wealth management. Um, uh, and, and so you hear a lot of things I would say, which maybe uh, someone said, uh, is that the businessman who is speaking or is it the preacher? So sometimes you might hear the businessman is talking and sometimes it's the preacher speaking. But they all go together because uh, as the apostle Paul taught us, you can actually preach and make tents at the same time. That was uh, uh, what they call what they call it, it was something you put on the side, a sidebar. Uh, verse seven: If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. And when he says that you bear much fruit, what is a uh, fruit? When someone talks to you about fruit, about your life. The, 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 when it says fruit, it's talking about the abundant life that God would like to give you and me for you and for those around you. When God talks of fruitfulness, yes, he's talking you of earning, getting people to be saved. That is also fruit. But he's talking of the fruit of your own life, the abundant life that God wants to give you and those around you. Uh, most of our problems as human beings, and now this, this is a preacher speaking, arise from, to the extent by which we are disconnected from the help or the resources that God has for us to meet our needs. Did you hear me? Most of our problems arise to a very large extent because of being disconnected. If only we could connect to what God has provided for us, then he would solve our problems. And that's why I titled this message you become what you are connected to. Because if you can select what to connect to, if you know what you want to become, and you connect with whatever vehicle is going to wherever you are going, then you will go. Because you become what you are connected to. And I think this is a, a most suitable message for young, younger people. Um, but it applies to all of us, because even we older people can correct course, we can change course we can turn around and start reconnecting those loose ends that have been disconnected. Most of our problems as humans arise from being disconnected from help that God has provided and from the resources that God has made available for us. Therefore, the call of the message today is to connect, to reconnect, and to stay connected. That is why God sent me to you today. To say, let us connect, let us reconnect, and let us stay connected to whichever, to, to him, so that we can be able to tap into the resources and to tap into the blessings that he has for us today. And if we are to reconnect, if we are to connect, and if we are to stay connected, we need to check whether the, the, where the disconnect is or where are the loose connections. Because as I said, you might be playing, uh, praying very hard. And, they, and they're trying to ask God to help you. But what you just need to check is the disconnect and to see what you are connected with because you are becoming, knowingly or unknowingly, you are becoming whatever it is that you are connected to. We were never meant to be independent or self-sufficient. God created us with the capacity to tap into whatever is surrounding us and whatever is around us so that we can survive and be nourished. And our greatest loss 
is when we are disconnected from God, the source of all life. Our greatest disconnect is when we are disconnected from God, the source of all life. And we see this in a very graphic image in Luke chapter 15. We see a person who is at the father's house, a person who is enjoying the abundance of his father's house, but he gets disconnected. He actually by choice gets disconnected. He says, give me what is mine and I want to go. He gets disconnected. And he goes and gets connected. You, so you can see, you become what you're connected. He disconnects from his father's house. He goes and gets connected with a, a certain group of people. And he becomes what they are. Indeed, he goes so far because he, he, he connects himself with a man who was raising pigs. And at the end of the day, you can see the graphic image of a person who was in the father's house with the abundance of life. And now the person in the pig stay, in the pig house, tempted actually to eat the pig's food. That is the picture of disconnection. If you want to know what being disconnected is, a person who disconnects from the father's house and connects with things, and he becomes actually, the Bible says he almost felt like eating. He almost felt, he disconnected so much with the pigs that he almost felt like so you actually can become what you're connected with, that he actually felt like he could eat pig food. Do you see how far one can go by being disconnected? You actually unknowingly become what you are connected with. You can imagine someone coming from the father's house, the palace, the child of the, of the president. And now you hear he's actually tempted to eat that. That is the, the picture, the graphic picture of being disconnected. But you also see the other side of a person disconnected coming back and getting reconnected. And that's why this message is about reconnecting, connecting, and staying connected. Because Jesus said, abide, abide in me. And that's staying connected. We see the opposite of being disconnected, reconnecting again. The same parable that Jesus gave in Luke chapter 15 he says, this man, when he came to himself and actually saw the picture that we are talking about, he actually compared the picture before and the picture after. And he said, what is this? Is this me? Can't believe it. And he changed his mind and said, I will go back to my father. I will reconnect again. And so we can see the power of reconnection. And God in his grace even those who we would reject, we will receive. You see, many times we become too holier than thou. And there are people we think, these people, this person has backslid so bad, he can't come back. Those are the people who almost went into the pig house. God can receive them, clean them up, and give them even a ring of royalty. Sometimes we, we, we as the Germans say, we become more Catholic than the Pope. We, we, we come even more holy than God himself. We, we, we say, these people can't be accepted by God again. So, we see God can accept anyone, so long as we are willing to turn back. So long as we are willing to be reconnected. There is nobody who has been written off. We can get back. We can come back. We can get back. We can get cleansed. We can be washed again. We can be restored. Indeed, you can be restored and God can raise you even to a higher place than you had gone. Amen? Amen? That is the picture of being disconnected and the picture of being reconnected. When we get disconnected, we try all kinds of ways to fix the problems of life, but we are not able. When we get disconnected, we try how to resolve. We find things are not working when we try to find solutions. And, and that's why the, the Lord says in Jeremiah 2 verse 13, my, my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me the spring of living water and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. We get disconnected, then we try to solve our problems, and then we find the, the problems are not being solved, they are not working. What we need to do is just get reconnected uh, and God will help us 
to reconnect again and fix the problem. If I may paraphrase what God is saying in Jeremiah 2.13, he says, the Lord is saying, people who know me and who are once connected to me have gotten disconnected from me, the source of life, and all that is good in it. Things have gone out of order, and they are trying to fix them. But what have, has happened? They have found that the solutions that they have fashioned are not working. And we struggle trying to fix our own lives. We struggle of trying to fix our own lives, and we find the solutions we are putting are not working. Therefore, God calls us to reconnect with him because he has the answer to our problems so that we can find true answers and true value. He says what we are trying to do are imitations. What we are trying to do are counterfeit. What we are trying to do is fake. He says in Revelation 3.18, here's what I want you to do. And I'm reading from the message. Buy your gold from me. Gold that's been through the refiner's fire. Then you will be rich. Buy your clothes from me. Clothes designed in heaven. You've gone around half naked long enough. And buy medicine for your eyes from me so that you can see, really see. The solutions in this world cannot solve our problems. We try to sort our problems so that we can't find an answer. God is telling us, those are imitations, whatever you're trying to seek. They are fake. They are counterfeit. They will not work. Unless we get disconnected with God, who has the real gold, who has the real clothes to close our nakedness, who is able to open our eyes to see. Um, as I was reading this verse, I was reminded of something that happened here in Kenya. I think the, the king of Dubai came and he was sold fake gold here in Nairobi. <laughs> was it 400 million? I think he lost 400 million. He got fake gold. Sometimes we, we can get fake solutions in life and we pay 400 million for it. By the time he realized that, the Kenyans had already gone into the Panya roots. And I don't think he, he, he ever got the money back to this day. So the Bible is saying, if we are disconnected, we need to reconnect with God because God has the real stuff. He's got what it takes to solve our problems. What people call life might be fake life. Or as we say, nothing compared to what we can get from God. What you call life, what people call life, when people, they go on the weekend and Monday, they say, we had life. It is nothing compared to what you can get from God if you commit your life to God. And that's why John was, when speaking to the people, telling them to reconnect to God, he says, make straight the ways of the Lord. John, speaking to the people, telling to reconnect, he was telling them, make straight the ways of the Lord. And that's what the Lord is telling us today, make straight the ways of the Lord. You know what John would have said if he was speaking in plain English? He, was, he would be saying, remove all the obstacles in your life that would hinder God's delivery track from bringing blessings to your life. As I say, the burden is on us. When we say God has put a condition, no. It is, the burden is on us. It, God has put choice to us. He says, if, if, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, uh, pray whatever you will and it will be done. It is a choice as opposed to a condition that God, the burden is not on God, but the burden is on us to respond to his word. That's why the Bible gives us uh, the great invitation, what I call the great invitation, in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, which is also a call to reconnect. And the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, reconnect with God and turn from their wicked ways, reconnect with God, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And when God says land here, he's not talking of the, the dirt, the soil. When God talks of land, he's, he's talking of life. And everything that supports life. When God says, I will heal your land, he's talking of your life and everything that supports it. And he's, say, he's saying, 
If my people, again, it's, it's, a, it's an invitation, it's a choice. If my people, which are called by my name, we could have thought he's speaking to the people out there who don't go to church. But he's saying, my people, people who know me, if they could reconnect, seek my face, clear the way, remove the obstacles, then my delivery trucks will come and deliver the blessings to their life. So I'm saying, sometimes we spend a lot of time praying and trying to figure out God. But he's giving us very simple saying, they're saying, clean house. Look at the things that are not right. Look at the obstacles in your life that are blocking God's blessing to your life. Deal with them. You, you don't need to pray them out. Just deal with them. Just deal with them. Disconnect with them. And reconnect with God. This young man, when he was in the pig house, said, he came to himself, he, 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 he actually, he wasn't praying, actually, he was thinking. He said, what am I doing? And that's what sometimes we need to do. You sit back all by yourself and ask, what am I doing with my life? And when you come to that, then you say, I know where I missed the way. And you reconnect. And you might not need even to pray. You might just have to go back and do what you need to do. You just take the action. Of course, prayer helps uh, uh, all the time because God helps us to take the action. Don't, don't think that I'm minimizing a prayer. If my people who are called by my name, you can see these were people who were once connected with God, have discovered and disconnected, and God is calling us to repent. Yes, to repent, to clean house, to renounce. There are some habits we need to renounce. Yes, 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 yes. There are some habits we need to renounce. We need to repent. That is reconnecting. Repenting is moving from where you're going to going a different direction. Cutting some connections, some strings, and tying your strings, abiding with Jesus. Connecting and reconnecting and saying connected. Amen. Yes, if my people who are called my name, that's a choice. Don't say it's a condition. The burden is not on God, the burden is on me. As I said, the most important connection is the connection with God. Because you become what you are connected to. You become what you are connected to. And knowing that we become what we are connected to. What you feed is what succeeds. I'll tell you a story of an Indian. You can take the Indian similar to the people, say, in Trukana. The native Indians, you can compare to people who are hearing the gospel the first time, like you go to Trukana and you're preaching to people. They've never gone to school, but you're taking the gospel. So the missionary went and preached to the Indian, the native Americans, and he accepted the Lord, he got saved. But then after a while, he went to the missionary and said to the missionary, Mr. Missionary, it feels in my heart there is a fight. There's a fight going on in my heart. It's like he, he described it the way he knew from the village, the way you would talk from the examples you have. So he had seen dogs fighting in the village. And if you're from the village, me, I'm from the city. I grew up in the city. So. But if you're from the village, you have seen... But I think even in the city, dogs fight. We even see goats eating from the trash. So uh, I don't want to put it on you people from the village. But uh, if you have been from the village, you have seen dogs fighting. So the Indian had seen dogs fighting. And he said, in my heart, it's like there are two dogs fighting. So he's using the example, the language he knows. He didn't know hallelujah, Lord is good all the time. He didn't know that. Uh, so he knew the language. He said, it feels like in my heart there are two dogs fighting. And the missionary asked him, which dog is winning? He said, the one that I'm feeding more. So what you feed is what succeeds. What you connect with and what is feeding you, you become whatever it is. That's why Jesus said, you are the branch and I'm the vine. I'm the one feeding you if you are connected with me. And you become, the Bible says actually we become like him. We are going from glory to glory, being changed in his likeness because we are connected with him. That is the truth of our scripture, that we are being changed from glory to glory into his likeness. 
They are the, the disciples of Jesus in the Acts of the Apostles. When the people looked at them, they said, these are Christians. They looked like Christ. That's why they, they, the first time they were called Christians, because they, they so much looked like Christ. They so much looked Christian, because they were connected with him, and they started changing to be like him. We can uh, become disconnected either by choice or because of lack of information of knowing how important it is. So if you find things are not working in your life, you've been trying this, that, and the other, and things are not working, what you, and you need to make changes. You just need to make changes to what you're connected to. Because you will become whatever you are connected to. If whatever is feeding your life is not bringing success, then you need to change the, what you're connected to. Our lead text in John 15 verse 4, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. It, it, it depends on what it is connected with unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. The Jesus is saying you can try, but it will all be for naught. If we are disconnected, we lack the supplies of all that is necessary for our lives. If we get disconnected from God, we, we, the, the, the abundant life that Jesus talked about becomes a mirage. It becomes a story. It becomes something we cannot reach. When Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it in its abundance, it becomes just a story when we are disconnected. We can read it many times, but when we are disconnected, we are not receiving the feed from him. We are not receiving nourishment. We are disconnected from the help and the sources that God has for me and for you. It is so true. You see children coming from very well-off families, but when they disconnect themselves, they cannot even enjoy the family wealth. They become disobedient to the parents, and you're not going to throw good money after the bad. You get disconnected, actually you lose the sources and the supplies that God has for you. Even in this world, the problem of disconnection, the problem of being disconnected, is so critical that we examine our lives and ask ourselves, what am I connected with? Because as soon as we reconnect and connect with what we need to connect, then our lives will start to change for the better. Then your, your dreams and your prayers will be achieved because you are connecting with the vehicles that are taking you to wherever you want to go. If you want to go to Thika, you don't catch the Matatu to Nairobi, do you? But in life, we always do that. You, you, you go with the crowd that is going to Thika and you want to go to Nairobi. So you find by the time you are in Gedorai, oh, these guys I'm with are headed a different direction. So actually, it's so true in life that what you're connected with and you know where I'm driving at to. As a preacher, you know where the preacher is driving to. I'm trying to tell you to change. I'm trying to tell you to disconnect. You can, you can always see where the preacher is headed to. Very early, within 15 minutes, you know where the preacher is headed to. I'm trying to tell you there are some connections you might have to, have to cut. And you might have to rethink and see, are there connections that I need to start creating? That, that is the objective. And there's no secret to the message. The action plan at the end, that is what I will say when I finish. Things you need to check what you need to cut. You need to see what you need to connect. Amen? We, get, we miss out on the blessings of God by being disconnected. When we are connected to the vine, we become a part of the plant of the vine and we enjoy the blessings and the, the fruits of that vine become our fruits. You become what you are connected to and the fruit shows. Abide in me and I in you. As I say, to abide is to be connected and to stay connected. And in verse 7 of the same chapter, the Bible says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you ask what you desire and it shall be done. You will ask what you desire and it will be done. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. 
If you are connected to him, you will be able to ask him. If you are connected to him, you will be able to ask him. When the son was at the pig house, he could not ask for help from the father. See, when you are disconnected, you can't ask. You only ask help from the person you are connected to, isn't it? It sounds, it sounds almost obvious. You only get help from the person you are connected to. You get support from what you are connected to. You tap the resources of what you are connected to. I want when you go to, to sleep tonight, you just be hearing connected to, connected to, so that you will be asking, what am I connected to? You're the one to dream out about? Connected to, because you will become what you are connected to. It is actually true with anything we are connected to. You become what you are connected to. So, you can change your future by changing what you are connected to. May I say that again? You can change your future by changing what you are connected to. I'm not saying it is easy. Because it might be a very deep-rooted connection. It might be a very deep-rooted habit. And it also it might be something which is giving you some comfort at this time. So I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it is important. That is if you have any goals, if you have any prayers, if you have any dreams. Because if there is something you are connected to that is contrary to your dreams and your prayers, then you are going to become whatever it is and not what you are trying to achieve. I say it's not easy, but it is important. It's not easy. I'm, I'm not suggesting something easy. We have an opportunity to make changes in our lives so that we can achieve our dreams and our prayers. And then you ask me, Pastor, where do I start? Where do I start? Where do I start, Pastor? I'm ready. Like this guy who said, I have heard the gospel. And here is the water. What's hindering me from being baptized? You're asking me. I agree with you, Pastor. Where do, you, do I start? And I tell you where to start. There are things which might need to be revisited. There are things which needs, might need to be reviewed. The first one is the people we are connected to. There is an old saying that you become the company you keep. You become like the people you run around with. Show me your friends. And in five years I will tell you what you will become. So you might have to revisit and to review the people. It's not easy. It might be a friend you are with from uh, elementary school. This is a close friend. But they are going a different direction and you're going a different direction. It might mean the activities that you engage in. What do you allocate your time for? What are your priorities? What are you trying to build? Do your surroundings promote what you're trying to build? The surroundings promote the kind of family you want to build. Believe it or not, it is very easy, very easy to be influenced by the people we spend time with. You might not believe it, but I, believe me as an old man. Did I tell you I have uh, three children and six grandchildren? So you think, I, th I think I've seen a number of things. It's very easy to be influenced. Much easier than we think. I, I call it the, the frog effect. It's a frog effect. You see, the animals, they call amphibians. They, they take the temperature of the surrounding. And sometimes we get caught in the frog effect. We become whatever is surrounding us. They say you can actually kill a frog in boiling water without the frog knowing. Because as the temperature continues to go up, it acquires a new temperature. By the time it's boiling, it is dead. That's what happens to us. Whatever surrounds us works like the frog effect. We actually become. 
I don't know whether you are working in an office where people use curse words, the short words. They, they call them by letters, the S word or the A word. If you work long enough, those words will be ringing in your head, even if you don't use them. You, you'll be finding situations where you feel like you want to apply one of the, those short words. <laughs> it becomes part of you. Sometimes you watch films where they are using those words and you, you still feel comfortable. It's, it's a frog effect. Whatever surrounds us, we, we end up becoming like it because we, we change our temperature as we keep changing and agreeing. We say, oh, everybody's doing that these days. Uh, yeah, that's what everybody's doing. No, not everybody's doing that. That's a lie. The devil is a liar. We are called to be different. You are, di you are being different is what shows you are a Christian. Your distinctness is your strength. It's not your being like everybody else. Your being different actually is what shows you out. And that is your testimony. That is my testimony. That's why the Bible tells us in Romans 2, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God will. When I was a young man, we used to pray, God, show me your will. Show me your will. I don't know whether young people still pray like that these days. They, they try to find the will of God. But the Bible is telling us it's a question of connecting. If you think this brother is going the right direction, connect with him. You don't have to go to Karura Forest and pray. If you see a sister who is actually living for God, make friends with that sister. You connect with her and you see you are starting to, be, to look like her. I'm not saying prayer is wrong. Please don't, don't take me wrong. But I'm saying there are things we, we are praying for which, which we need to take action about. If you know a sister who is, who is telling you everybody is doing that, or a brother is telling you everybody is doing that, now you have to be careful because you also become like everybody else. And your distinctiveness, your being different, is actually makes you a Christian. The Bible says we are a unique generation. A chosen people, a people of God, so that we can show his marvelous light. We can only show God's marvelous light by being different, by showing our distinctiveness. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The Bible urges us not to conform, to seek to be like the world and what else is in the world, but to seek to change and be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Your mind is the engine that drives your life. Yes, your mind is the engine that drives your dreams and your goals. Your mind. There's a true saying that a person, a man, as a man thinketh, so is he. You become what you think. You become what is your thought life. You become what is in your mind. As a man thinks, so is he. A person is a product of his thoughts. And his thoughts are a product of what he is connected with. That's why we become what we are connected with. Or connected to. Therefore, to change your life, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Allowing new ideas and new thoughts to influence your life. Especially the word of God. Letting the word of God influence your thinking, your life. Let us connect the dots. Changing what to connect with leads to your mind being changed. Which changes the direction of your life. You become your changed thoughts. What you consume forms what you are. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. So if you feed from me, you will be like me. What you eat, uh, the physical food we eat, they influence what our body and our health is going to be like. Our spiritual and mental feed, whatever we feed in our minds and our, and our, and our hearts, uh, make us who we are. The information we are consuming, the TikTok we are watching, you have to select which TikTok. 
You see, they, they say TikTok is one of the most advanced apps in changing your mind. Because they, they first of all see what, what you like, and they keep sending you what you like. So you always wonder, oh, they send me something I like. Always. It's one of the most powerful algorithms. So as soon as they find what you like, they will feed you, and you will become whatever it is. So, so even some of the social media we are in, you might decide that it is damaging you and not helping you. I say it is not easy, but it's important. You might be in some groups where you find that it's really not helping you. Uh, there was a lady in our church who, I asked, why is the lady not coming to church? The, the fellow who, was, uh, who had introduced them to church said, she watches Facebook so much at night that she can't actually be able to wake up in the morning because she's up until three o'clock perusing, editing what every nephew and every cousin wrote and replying. Let me tell you something. Everything that's written in WhatsApp, you don't have to reply. It's not meant that you reply. Some of it is just for reading. You just read and you don't have to reply. Some people think everything written, they have to reply. You don't have to. Some things you can read, some you might not even read. Like every video sent to you by your friends, you don't have to open it. There are many videos sent to me and I never opened them. I have never known what they were meant for or what they were for. Uh, so, sorry if you have ever sent me a video. <laughs> you, you don't have to read all of them. You don't have to open all of them. Nothing will happen to you. You will not miss out anything. So whatever you are feeding yourself with is what you will become. As I said, you have already heard the message. So the question is, what are you connected with and what do you need to disconnect and what do you need to reconnect? As I finish, Psalm number one teaches us about the power of connecting and what we surround ourselves with. It warns us again in surrounding ourselves with advisors who are ungodly, people who promote disobedience to the word of God. It warns us about that. And it tells us to surround ourselves with wise advice of the word of God. So by you choosing who you're going to be connected with, it's going to change your life. By making the choice to disconnect from what is not of God and connecting to what is of God, the Bible compares you to one who has been planted in an environment um, where there is life-giving water. And the psalm says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, the advisors. When you are seeking advice, where are you getting your advice from? Nor stands in the path of sinners. Who do you hang out with? Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Those who speak lightly of the word of God. I will not hang out with them. It doesn't matter what they have. It doesn't matter how, how much fun there is. I'll not hang out with them. People who scorn the word of God, who, people who poo, poo the word of God, people who look down on the word of God, I'll not hang out with them. But my delight, his delight is the law of the Lord. And in the law they meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in season whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. If we want to dis prosper, then we know there are things we need to disconnect, there are things we need to connect. And that is a message that the Lord sent me to bring you today, all the way from Memphis, Tennessee. Do you receive it? Yes. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word wherein you have spoken to us. That if we abide in you and your word abides in us, then we can ask what we need because we, you, we get whatever we need from what we are connected with. Lord, you have also given us life wisdom, liberation knowledge, that whatever people, activities, and however we spend our time, these are the things that are shaping our lives. And some of them actually have become obstacles to the blessings that you are sending our way. 
And I pray that, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, that you speak to each one of us in our hearts, interpreting this word for us, applying it to our hearts, our lives, helping us to see, open our eyes to see our own lives, to see those things which we need to cut off and to see those things we need to build up. Now, now I want to pray. I want to pray for you so that God will give you the strength to take action. The action to go and cut off those things that need to be cut off and to go and find and pursue those things that you need to connect with. Those vehicles that will take you where you want to go. If you know that brother, that sister, if you know that activity which will build you, the home group, the prayer meeting, the Bible study, whatever you, you know, let God reveal it to you. What you need to connect with, which will take you where you want to go. I want to pray that God will give you the strength to take action. If you put your right hand up and mention what it is to God, I will agree with you that God will give you the strength to go when you go and take action. I have any father see the hands that are raised. We are saying, Lord, we have heard your word. The call to go and re-examine our lives and see the obstacles that would hinder you bringing the blessings you have for us. Those things that are not helping us to where we want to go, our dreams and our prayers. We have connected with things which are going a different direction. I pray that, Lord, those who have raised their hands, that you will give them the strength to go and take the action that they need to take, to cut off and to build those connections those connections that will lead them to where they want to go, to their prayers, to their dreams. I thank you all for your word. Where you are saying if we can connect with you and abide in you and stay connected. You already have blessings for us. You are telling us to compare where we are and the father's house where there is an abundant life and see what is causing us to stay where there is lack and where we are separated, disconnected from God. Speak to each one of us and help us, Lord, that, Lord, we will make this decision. Make the commitment, Lord, to connect and stay connected. Be consistent, stay connected with you, Lord and to be people of action, practicing and doing those things that are building those connections that will help us. We thank you, Lord, this afternoon for your word, or this morning for your word. And we pray that you may seal, us, seal it in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to pray for anyone who is sick now. If you may hold wherever you are sick. I pray that the Lord will touch you and heal you. Our Heavenly Father, we want to pray for those who are ailing as they touch the parts of their bodies that are ailing, Lord. I pray that your healing hand may be extended and touch them, Lord. Touch them from the hair of their heads to the toes of their feet. Bring total healing, Lord. Bring total healing. And I also pray those who are having emotional and mental challenges, that God, you will say, peace be still. You quieten the distress that is out there. That your people may enjoy the abundance of life that you promised. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us. In Jesus' name. And now I want to pray for the last good. Let's continue to pray. This is the last group I want to pray with. Maybe you're out there and you're saying, I'm actually totally disconnected from God. And I want to reconnect. So I can start this reconnection, which is going to change my life for the better. Moving from that place of lack to the Father's house, where there's an abundance of life. If you're there, as we continue praying, let's continue praying, let's continue praying in prayer. If you're out there and you want me to pray with you, God sent me here for you. I want to pray with you. 
Are you there? You have never accepted Christ as your Savior. Or you feel you need strength for the journey. Just show me by the raising of your hand and I pray with you. Lord, I thank you and I pray that you may strengthen us, your people. Lord, as I look in this congregation, I see hope. When I see young people who are looking to you, people, people who are looking to you, who are depending on you, who are saying, Lord, you are our hope. We see hope. We are encouraged to see and to know that those who commit their lives to you, those who abide in you, will never be put to shame. And I pray that the word that you've spoken today will be an encouragement to those many who have committed to abide and stay connected with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to me.